Using Google Scholar can be a great way to find resources for your topic, but there are drawbacks. For example, many, if not most, of the articles will ask you for money. Or you might not be sure if they're peer-reviewed, or even from a credible journal. Sometimes you run a simple search only to find that it gets back way more results than you would ever care to sort through. In short, Google Scholar can be an amazing tool for research, but it can also be a huge time waster. This video is meant to provide a very brief overview of Scholar and show some suggestions on how to make it work the most to your advantage. Google Scholar is a lot different than our library databases. While both can be used to search through and in some cases access scholarly literature, that is where the similarities end. Unlike the library databases, Google Scholar isn't meant to provide access to articles, just to locate records of them. That is why you're often asked for payment for these articles, even though you can access nearly all of them for free using the library databases and interlibrary loan. Scholar also lacks a lot of the features used in the library databases. While most of our databases will allow you to narrow your results down in various ways, including by date, peer review status, subject, publication, and others, Scholar only allows you to narrow down your results by date and not much else. That doesn't mean Scholar can't be used in a more effective way, but it should probably explain why we don't recommend conducting searches in Scholar unless you've exhausted your other options. So right now, we're looking at some search results, and while we can access some of these results, many of them are not available. If I click on this one, for instance, I'm taken to a page where it's going to ask me for money to download this article. If you take one thing away from this video, please make it this. Do not pay for these articles. There's a good chance we already have access through the Pollock Library, and even if we don't, we can always get it to you free of charge through interlibrary loan. All you need to do is to add the Pollock Library access link, which will allow you to locate those items in the library catalog with one click. At the very least, it can save you a lot of cutting and pasting. To add the Pollock Library link to Scholar, just click on the horizontal lines at the very top left of the page. Then, Settings. This brings us to a new page where we can take a look at the options for our Scholar page. From here, we can do things like set up preferred languages, export to citation managers, and other things. But what I'm looking for is this link here, Library Links. This allows us to align our results with a particular library. You can type Pollock Library or CSUF, and you'll see California State University Fullerton, Pollock Library Find It. Check this box, and then click Save. Once we've done that, we're taken back to our search results, only this time it looks a little bit different. We can see to the right of these articles that we now have links which read Pollock Library Find It. Clicking on these links will take us directly to the listing in Pollock Library. From here, we can access the article through a variety of databases. Sometimes, it might seem like the access link is missing. However, if you don't see it, just click on the double caret sign here, and you can see that it will appear. In this case, we do not have access to the article. However, I can request it just by clicking on the Sign in for more options button and requesting the item. Earlier in this video, I mentioned that I typically don't use Scholar to search for articles, so I wanted to give you an idea of how I do use it. Let's imagine that I've been conducting my search using the library databases, and I've stumbled across this article, which seems really on point for my topic. This is a great find, but I'm frustrated, since this article was published in 2016 and my assignment only allows me to use resources from the last five years. Normally, I would look through this article's reference list, but in this case, most of the items on there will be too old to fall within my time frame. This is where Scholar can be extremely helpful. Once I've located just one article which is really addressing my topic, then I can look it up there. I do that just by copying the article's title, and I can paste it directly into Google Scholar and hit search. Now I'm looking at the article's record. I already have access to this through the library databases. So I'm not really interested in locating the article itself, but what I am really interested in is right here, cited by 40. Since this article was published in 2016, 40 other authors have cited it in their reference list. That means I can click on this link 
and be taken to a list of 40 articles, which should at least be somewhat about my topic, all published after 2016. This is a great way to turn one article into many. Now, some articles will have been cited a lot more, and some a lot less, but this is a good way to learn about the impact that the article has had in the field. I can also search within these results. So if I have a particular keyword that I'm searching for, I can narrow them down that much easier. This can be extremely helpful when an article has been cited hundreds of times. Following the cited by links is a great way to expand your research. Remember that each of these results also have this cited by feature, so you can really track the literature on this subject. That's all I have time for to discuss in this video, but there's a lot more you might be able to learn about Google Scholar. If you've got questions about these advanced functions or want to learn more about what else it can do for you, please don't hesitate to reach out to your friendly subject librarian, and we'll be happy to assist you. You can learn more about who your subject librarian is by clicking here on the library homepage. Or, for more immediate help, you can always visit our virtual reference desk using the Get Help link here. The desk is staffed 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Help is only a click away. Thanks for watching, and good luck with your research.